Hello, everyone. This is the second uh, podcast of the Theory Center. This is Zoltan Bordjashimon. And last time. And our guest is... Uh, Eva Domanska. Eva is a professor of the human sciences at uh, the Department of History at Adam uh, Mickiewicz uh, University in Poznan. And uh, we are here at the uh, th- th- third INTH conference in Stockholm, where Eva was organizing a panel, um, a tribute to Hayden White, and uh, she was also having her talk on uh, the forensic turn. So um, I think we can just, yeah, just let's go with the questions. Let's go with the questions. And the first question we would have is, Eva, um, if you imagine history, what would you think of? If you just have an image in mind, what would you think of? Um, what is history for you? What do you see? Uh, I see the future, which is without history. Um, what I mean by that is uh, I am observing a decline of uh, the role of humanities uh, in academia. And I have a, a feeling that researching um, current tendencies in the humanities and social sciences, I afraid that in the future history might be consumed by uh, human sciences, generally speaking, So it might lose the status of a separate discipline. On the other hand, uh, I myself sometimes uh, hesitate to use the term history because it's so uh, related to Western idea of, uh, of the past. So if I really want to be very inclusive, I'd rather use the term knowledge or knowledges of the past. Uh, and um, various ways of knowing the past. So it makes uh, scholars working on non-Western approaches to the past, indigenous uh, scholars, more sympathetic to to what we are doing in uh, uh, Western academia or in academia which is (laughs) Western-oriented. That's what I would say. Okay, second question then. The second question is that how did you come to what you are working on today? I mean, you, I know that you are working on a lot of things today, as you did always, but just generally speaking, how did you come to, let's say, deal with these sets of questions that you are dealing with? Well, first interest is, of course, in the theory of history, history of historiography and methodology of history. So I was very much interested in... Uh, Um, more sophisticated uh, answers related to philosophy. What uh, what is history about? Why people should be interested in history? Uh, what is the relationship between history and philosophy? I was very much interested in philosophies of history, and of course Hegel and and Spengler and Toynbee. I think at some point of our lives, we were all interested in these issues uh, since we were trying to structure also our perception of the role of and our condition as as scholars, as human beings within all these sorts of questions. So this was my starting point and I was very much always interested in something that was not really popular. Uh, the, the ideas of Ortega y Gasset and uh, Unamuno and uh, Nikolai uh, Birdiaev. Uh, so These scholars who were who are very influential in, let's say, Spain or Spanish-speaking uh, countries uh, and in East Central Europe, but they are somehow marginalized by Germans uh, uh, who are interested in this philosophies of history coming from this part of the world. Uh, so this is my first interest. The second interest is more practical, is related to my research, which are on genocide and ecocide studies. I'm very much interested in the relationship between uh, genocides and ecocides. And this is how the long-lasting project on uh, ontology of uh, human dead body and remains, the is omitted in purpose. I am not saying about the dead body. Uh, about uh, so, um, so this is about. Uh, it originated from all these imaginaries of the Second World War that we uh, had as scholars, 
but also students of history um, after Second World War in East, East Central Europe. So we were, we were, when we were studying uh, Second World War, it was all about uh, corpses of Auschwitz mm -hmm. or corpses uh, in gulags, right? So that's that was something that I was very much. Um, frustrated about because when, for example, thinking about uh, exhumations, also exhumations of Polish officers who were killed by uh, uh, Soviet uh, Soviets in Katyn, mm. right? Uh, I uh, I ask myself how many times the human body has to be uh, exhumed in order to prove the case. And as you know, there were like many, many exhumations uh, going on. So this, the, the starting point was the ethical question about exhumations as a political tool. Yeah, very difficult to make the connection to the next question. Um, um, you organized um, on this conference. You organized um, a tribute um, session um, uh, for Hayden White, the late Hayden White. Um, if you uh, would explain to a first-year student the impact of Hayden White um, on historical writing, what would you tell this first-year student? Yeah. First of all, I want to say that uh, the panel was organized by Maria Ines La Greca from Argentina and myself. <laughs> so I, that's a, a little correction. What I would, what I'm saying to uh, the students of history, the first year, I would say this is the scholar who is trying to show that historical writing is a kind of literary writing. So the best tools to uh, analyze historical narrative are coming from literary studies, not necessarily from theor uh, historical theory. So if you know something about how to analyze uh, um, uh, literary texts, poems, novels, you also might imply this knowledge to talk about uh, different layers of narratives. So the students would know that narrative is not only about the, the surface, the facts, but there are a lot of layers and we're supposed to uh, dig up these layers, which are also related to the problem of verification of historical uh, uh, knowledge, validation of, uh, of statements, ethics, uh, involvement of a historian in the production of, of historical narrative. So this, is, this would be the first, center, uh, the first thing. And the second, history, of course, is a, uh, uh, is a form of literature. Right, mm -hmm. so it's the very close connections, but of course we have some sub-disciplines like historical demography, which is more on scientific side, but this is not necessarily what the dominant education of um, history students is about. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question is, uh, what do you think in which direction theoretical work on history is going? And that's especially, it's a very interesting question in light of the answer you gave to the first question. Yeah, I have to say that I am very, very positive about these conferences organized by the network. I see a new dynamic, new people coming, fresh blood, uh, very avant-garde ideas. But what was the most amazing about the conference that I see that there are two in a way, very different aspects of historical theories, theory which comes to the surface. Uh, first is uh, a renewal of an interest in analytical philosophy of history, which for me was obvious because mm -hmm. we have like uh, two or even three sessions about that and the rooms were full. The second is something which I appreciate very much, an interest, growing interest in indigenous ways of knowing, in the problem of uh, indigenous uh, history uh, as it should be uh, put on the surface of our interest, right? So there is this kind of, uh, let's say, provincializing of topics which preoccupied historical theory for decades, and they were main, uh, and it was mostly related to what scholars in Western or Anglo-Saxon world and in German French academia were uh, were doing. So I think that this is 
a phenomenal tendency. Uh, the most important is that we have more and more scholars coming from Latin America, from Australia, from Canada, I hope from Africa in the future, and it would totally change the way we practice theory of history. Mm. We come to the very end, and it's going very quick now. Um, we have some either-or question for you. So we give you two, um, two um, words, and you only can choose for one. I, we know that the world is not black and white, but um, <laughs> yeah, here we go. I said, okay, book mm. or computer? Okay, it's speak. impossible to choose. <laughs> you might have a book in computer, but you mean printed book, uh -huh. either printed book yes. or a computer. I am very fatic. <laughs> I like the smell of books, and and uh, I like to touch and and make notes. So I I would choose books, but I I'm absolutely sure that this is generational choice. Maybe Apple should develop then um, computers which smell. Yeah, uh, that's next my one. Thing. Next one is difficult, but I go now for bigos or burger. Bigos, of course. Yeah. I'm from Poland. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next one: Donna Haraway or Hayden White? It's impossible. It's that's, that's the impossible point of the to question, choose. To make the impossible possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, because you know, you put the, this is an aporia. Mm. Right, I can't, I can't answer that because you know I'm as much related to okay. Hayden White ways of thinking as to Donna Haraway, who is really pushy and avant-garde, and I like, uh, I love her for her uh, for that. Mm -hmm. The living or the dead? The dead, of course, because there is nothing more alive than the dead body. Okay, last question then: history or theory? Uh, I would never put this dichotomy, never. So this is this is the question which is for me um, uh, uh, impossible to answer because I do both, and I really hope that we finally be able to um, to 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 build a very stable bridge between theory and history, and it would be no alienation between historians and theorists, philosophers of history. We really did our very best to push you in directions, but you were absolutely resistant. Thank you very much. It was a Thank pleasure. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you very much. <laughs>